c'est ici la journée de tenir la fête. Que ce soit pour nous, un sujet d'allégresse et deux. Moi, je suis content euh, pour nous capables de euh, passer Patrick avec nous. Nous connaissons ces anciens nous. Amen. 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 Même si là, elle va arrêter ça. Elle va capable. Elle va capable. Et, et, euh, Frère, là, vous êtes là, on parabole là. Il dit, merci, bon, on a grandi, 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 grandi. Les là, pour vous, quand on a fait des choses du côté, c'est même que les petits mouns ont ouvert le moment, ils ne sont pas là, ils vont y aller, ils vont y aller, ils vont y aller. Les bagues, elles étaient chargées, elles ont fini, quand on tourne. Non, puis maman, non, puis papa. Soit, soit, après midi, après pas, nous comptons, on connaît, nous n'avons pas de problème. Nous comptons, on m'a mis, même ça, c'est mon maman. Moi, mais ouais, elle a pile. Quand c'est pas chambre, grand, on dit, c'est toujours jeune dans le Seigneur. Amen, chaque amène, nous comptons, on va manger bon enfant, nous, nous comptons, on Et nous, comme présent, sous son bénédiction. Et c'est pour nous. Et c'est pour ça, nous toujours choisi des lieux dimanche pour nous capables de performer, pour des programmes, pour des festivals, pour capable de faire activité. Et moi, je ne suis pas facile pour faire des miracles pour moi, pour nous capables là. Parce que c'est parti que moi-même, moi, je mets tout le monde, moi, je travaille avec eux, moi, je mets un bon conseil et supporter. You can be here. So you can have a good education. So we don't have to go to integration school. You don't have to go uh, when you go to the store, when you go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of people that die that today we can have our freedom. Uh, you can be whatever you want. Yes. Like I always tell them, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So you can let, don't let nobody tell you because of your skin color, you cannot be a scientist, you can be a doctor, you can be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You can be whatever you want if you know what your future is. So I always encourage them to stay in school, to learn, pay attention to their teacher, and um, make themselves first happy. Because if you're not happy, you cannot make somebody else happy. Yeah. So you have to be happy first, so you can make somebody else happy. So if you're happy to learn, to cooperate with your teacher, to pay attention when he's teaching you, she, like I always tell them, the teacher, no matter what, they finish their school, they have their college. Yeah. You learn, you don't learn, they're having their patience. So their paycheck is coming every two weeks from their direct deposit bank. So you're the one who have to open your brain, your mind, your soul to learn and keep whatever they teach you. Amen? Amen. So this is my goal, my prayer for every children that are in this church. They can be a professional tomorrow. Amen. So this is our goal is to always serve God, to keep God in your heart, and keep school in your brain. That's what I always tell them. So that's why they're having a program. So they're dedicated for you guys. And please... Uh, Supportez vous applaudissez vous et tout ça pour faire ça, tout nous décider, décider à dédiquer avec un prière là, qui vient fêter la troisième année, nous sommes réellement vrai, c'est l'église là, elle était formée et nous apprécions ça parce que vous venez, vous venez fêter avec nous pour la gloire de Dieu. Amen. 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 Et vous réellement supportez nous, les pasteurs malades, vous venez à l'hôpital, le talaka, la vie prière avec nous, fait belle chose avec nous, m'apprécie ça de tout cœur. Ça a tellement touché moi. Je me sens que dans le problème, dans la maladie, dans la souffrance, nous ne pas seuls. Et capable de nous sentir que le monde entier avec nous. Grâce à la prière, ça qui fait pas seul capable de faire la jeudi. Et moi, je quoi au nom de Jésus, famille fraîchus, qui est pour camper, pour nous témoigner, pour nous dire c'est l'éternel qui est Dieu. C'est l'éternel qui est Dieu. Je souffre avec courage, je souffre avec espoir, parce que moi qui ai contre la situation, famille, moi, c'est l'éternel des hommes. Je ne peux pas l'empêcher qu'on a ouvert le programme avec Sister Geek Love qui va chanter un chant pour nous pour la gloire de Dieu. Allons applaudir. Amen. Amen.
mwetane Zodi na mbushu Zagbambo shepi pwe Mimwe antive Atme uleo tushe Tout bagay change Bon Dieu, bon nous voir, so nous devons utiliser les pour Jésus à la gloire de Dieu. Amen. Bon Dieu, bénis nous guide l'homme, continue à chanter pour bon Dieu. Nous avons un nous guide l'homme, nous qui pour aller en Seye Baya Gofi, nous avons un guide l'homme, nous avons un guide l'homme, nous avons un guide l'homme. Donc, les enfants avaient l'air de dire que tout le monde pense que c'est bon pour eux. Amen. 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 His occupation was civil rights leader. He was born January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. He died April 4, 1968 in Memphis, Tennessee. Best known for advising the civil rights mo movement and his I Have a King speech. Martin Luther King Jr. was a civil rights activist in the 1950s and 60s. He led nonviolent protests to fight for the rights of all people, including African Americans. He hoped that people in the world could become a colorblind society where race would not impact a person's civil rights. He's considered one of the great orators of modern times, and his speeches still inspire many to this day. Martin Luther King Jr. was born in Atlanta, Georgia on January 15, 1929. He went to Berkeley T. Washington High School. He was so smart that he skipped two grades in high school. He started his college education at Morris College at the young age of 15. After getting his degree in so sociology from Morehouse, Martin got a divinity degree from Cruiser Seminary and then got his doctor's degree from Boston University. Martin's dad was a preacher, which inspired Martin to pursue the min ministry. He had a younger brother and older sister. In 1953, he married Coretta Scott. Later, they would have four children, including Yolanda, Martin, Dexter, and Bernice. How did he get involved in civil rights? In his first major civil rights action, Martin Luther King Jr. led the Malgari bus boycott. This started when Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on a bus to a white man. She was arrested and spent the night in jail. As a result, Martin helped to organize a boycott of the public transport system in Montgomery. The boycott lasted for over a year. It was very tense at times. Martin was arrested and his house was bombed. In the end, however, Martin prevailed and segregation on the Montgomery buses came to an end. 
1963, Martin Luther King Jr. helped to organize the famous March on Washington. Over 250,000 people attended this march in effort to show the importance of civil rights recognition. Some of the issues the march hoped to accomplish included an end to segregation in public schools, protection from police abuse, and to get laws passed that would prevent discrimination in plan. It was it was at the march when Martin gave his I Had a Dream speech. This speech has become one of the most famous speeches in history. The March on Washington was a great success. The Civil Rights Act was passed a year later in 1964. How did he die? Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated on April 4th in Memphis, Tennessee, while standing on the balcony of his hotel. He was shot by James Earl Ray. Interesting facts about Martin Luther King Jr. King was the youngest person to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. Martin Luther King Jr. Day is a national holiday. At the Atlanta premiere of the movie Gone with the Wind, Martin sang with his church choir. There are 730 streets in the United States named after Martin Luther King Jr. One, one of his main influences was Mohandas Gandhi, who taught people to protest in nonviolent manner. He was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. The name of his original birth certificate is Michael King. This was a mistake, however. He was supposed to be named after his father, who was named for Martin Luther, the leader of the Christian Reformation movement. He is often referred by his initials, MLK. Amen. 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 So we need to know. Uh, the black history, what they do for those kids and for me too, for Amen. us as Haitians that come to this yes. country. Amen. So if it wasn't for his fight for us, we probably wouldn't be able to be here. Mm -hmm. Even all this fight that he did for us, they still have that discrimination yes. against mm -hmm. one another, against us, against black. So we thank God for this big movement that they do not only for the, uh, the black American, for us too who came here in this country as a foreigner. So we have uh, Morgan who's going to tell um, her story. Booker T. Washington. I have learned that success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life, as by the obstacles which he has overcome while trying to succeed. Amen. So what she wrote, she was referring to Booker T. Washington. This is one of the leaders so who really fight for all of us. So we have uh, Caitlin, next. Get on the stage, Caitlin. I play the stage. Harriet Tubman didn't take no stuff wasn't scared of nothing neither, didn't come this world to be no slave, and wasn't going to stay one either. <laughs> Farewell, she sang to her friends one night. She was mighty sad to leave them. But she ran that dark, hot night, ran looking for her freedom. She ran to the woods, and she ran through the woods with the slave catchers right behind her. And she kept on going till she got to the north where those mean men couldn't find her. Nineteen times she went back south to get 300 others. She ran for her freedom 19 times to save black sisters and brothers. Harriet Tubman didn't take no stuff, wasn't scared of nothing neither. Didn't come in this world to be no slave and didn't stay one either. My 
Angelo is a famous African American poet and is most known for being a civil rights activist. I'm going to read one of her poems. She's most known for the poem she named, I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings. A free bird leaps on the back of the wind and floats downstream till the currents end and dip his wings in the orange rays, orange sun rays, and dares to claim the sky. But a bird that stalks down his cage, down his narrow cage, and can see through his bars of rage, his wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The cage bird sings with a fearful thrill of things known but long for still. His tune is heard in a distant hill for the cage bird sings for freedom. The bird thinks of another breeze, a trade wind soft through the sighing trees, a fat worm waiting for the dawn bright, long, and he names the sky his own. But a cage bird stands on the grave's dreams. His shadow shouts for the nightmare scream. His wings are clipped and his feet are tied, so he opens his throat to sing. The, ch the cage bird sings with a fearful thrill of things unknown, but long for still, his tune is heard on the distant hill. The cage bird sings for freedom. I think Maya Angelou wrote this poem to show that even though if you are enslaved or if you're like if you're like trapped, you still have your voice and you should use your voice to sing for your freedom or get your freedom back. Thank you. Uh, Rachel. Well done. Good job, girls. I have a biography about Rosa Parks. Where did Rosa Parks grow up? Rosa grew up in the southern United States in Alabama. Her full name was Rosa Louise McCauley, and she was born in Tuskegee, Alabama on February 4, 1913, to Leona and James McCarley. Her mother was a teacher and her father was a carpenter. She had a younger brother named Slidester. Her parents separated while she was young and she, with her mother and brother, went to live on her grandparents' farm in the nearby town of Pine Level. Rosa used went to the local school for African American children where her mother was a teacher, going to school. Rosa's mother wanted to get her get a high education, but it wasn't easy for an African-American girl living in Alabama in the 1920s. After finishing up elementary school at Pine Level, she attended the Montgomery Industrial School for Girls. Then she attended the Alabama State Teachers College in order to try and get her high school diploma. Unfortunately, Rosa's education was cut short when her mother became very ill. Rosa left school to take care for her mother. After a few years later, Rosa met Raymond Parks. Raymond was a successful barber who worked in Montgomery. They married a year later in 1932. Rosa worked part-time jobs and went back to school, finally earning her high school diploma, something she was very proud of, segregation. During this time, the city of Montgomery was segregated. This meant that things were different for whites and black people. They had different schools, different churches, different stores, different elevators, and even different drinking fountains. Places often said signs saying for colored only or for whites only. When Rosa would ride the bus to work, she would have to sit in the back in the seats marked for colored. Sometimes she would have to stand even if there's seats up front for the whites. Fighting for equal rights. Growing up, Rosa had lived with racism in the South. She was scared of the members of the KKK who, were, who had burned down black people's houses and churches. She also saw a black man get beaten by a white bus driver for getting in his way. The bus driver only had to pay a $24 fine. Rosa and her husband, Raymond, wanted to do something about it. They joined the National Association for the Advance of Colored People. Rosa saw the opportunity to do something when the Freedom Train arrived in Montgomery. The train was supposed to not be segregated according to the Supreme Court, so Rosa led the group of African American students to the train. They attended the exposition on the train at the same time in the line in the same line as 
the white students. Some people in Montgomery didn't like this, but Rosa wanted to show them all people should be treated the same, sitting on the bus. It was on December 1st, 1955, that Rosa made her famous stand while sitting on the bus. Rosa had settled in her seat on the bus after on the bus after a hard day's work. All the seats on the bus were filled up when a white man aborted. The bus driver told Rosa and some of the other African Americans to stand up. Rosa refused. The bus driver said he would call the police. Rosa still didn't move. Soon the police showed up as Rosa was arrested. Montgomery bus boycott. Rosa was charged with breaking a segregation law and was told to pay a fine of $10. She refused to pay, however, saying that she was not guilty and that the law was illegal. She appealed to a higher court. That night, a number of African-American leaders got together and decided to boycott the city buses. This meant that Africans would no longer ride the buses. One of these leaders was Dr. Martha Luther King Jr. He became the president of the Montgomery Improvement Association, which helped to lead the boycott. It wasn't easy for people to boycott the buses as many African Americans didn't have cars. They had to walk to work or get a ride from a, in a carpool. Many people couldn't go into town to buy things. However, they stuck together in order to make a statement. The boycott continued for 381 days. Finally, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled the segregation laws in Alabama were unconstitutional after the boycott. Just because the laws were changed, things didn't get any easier for Rosa. They received, she received many threats and feared for her life. Many of the civil rights leaders' houses were bombed, including the home of Martha Luther King Jr. In 1957, Rosa and Raymond moved to Detroit, Michigan. Rosa continued to attend civil rights meetings. She became a symbol of to many African Americans of the for equal rights. She was not a symbol of freedom and equal equality to many today. Rosa was awarded the Congress Medal, Congressional Gold Medal, as well as the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Rosa often worked as a cemeterist when she needed a job or to make some extra money. You can visit the actual bus that Rosa Parks sat in at the Henry Ford Museum in Michigan. Where she lived in Detroit, she worked as a secretary for the U.S. Representative John Conyers for many, for many years. She wrote an autobiography called Rosa Parks, My Story in 1992. <laughs> I know uh, the biography is, is a little long, but we need to know about these people. Because if you don't know uh, your, your story, you don't know who you are. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You got to know your story. You have to know, you got to know who you are, where you come from, mm -hmm. in order to know who you are. Yeah. So it's your story is going to tell you who you are. So those people's story tell them who they are, and we're learning from them. It's because of them that we are here today. Mm -hmm. So we have to know what they do for us. The big sacrifice. Look about this, this is uh, what's the name again? You just hear about? Was that part? She's the one who started the whole movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, if she started the whole thing because she refused, she get tired of being uh, uh, begging by the white people. She said, "Today I'm not going to sit in the back. This is enough." Sometimes you take so much pressure even at your job. So sometimes you got to say to them, no, I'm not going to let this happen to me. I'm not going to let them use me like this. So this is how we got the fight from, uh, from uh, Worcester Park to Martin Luther King until going on and on and on and on. So we need to know the story for the kids to know, don't give up in life. Always fight for your right. Amen. So she yeah. fight for her right. Because of that, we all sitting here and praising God. Amen? Amen. So we got calm. Interesting. He's thanks. Celebrating life work um, of Do um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. You face injustice, justice, hate, and starve. You fall for what you should be. You rest and finally gave your life so others could be free. You could have hated, but you chose to love and understand, rejecting violence to oppose and evil in our hands. You're not, you're, you're not inflamed, but still inspired, with hope that would yield. You call for boycotts for 
not for fire, with faith on your shield. You march and protest for the poor, or every shade and hue. So many hardships you'd endure. For those who needed you, you stirred a nation's heart and mind. Your message still is, is clear. The, the colors not how we're defined. Your memory is also near. Each year the birth of holiday. The nation honor you and wonders when we'll see the day. Your dreams as, a, as last come true. Thank you, Paul. Now we have, you know, Ashley. She's a high school senior. She's getting ready to go to college soon. So let's give her a big hand. I have a poem on Rosa Parks. In a bus in the city of Montgomery, a woman came aboard. Little did anyone know at the time that this woman would change the world. When the color of your skin made a difference in society and determined how you were treated, there was a woman who wanted to change that all, and in front of the bus, she, she seated. When she was asked to move to the back like the rest, she, shook, she simply shook her head and didn't budge. Even though he was a white man, she was going to be the judge. And even as they cuffed her hands and sent her away to jail, in her mind she was not finished, she knew she didn't fail. Her actions started a very important movement in the history of African Americans. It sparked a revolution for equality, and so the civil rights movement began. Who did not say that poem yet? Good love. Hello. Nous pas besoin d'avoir une appel pour tes gens. Je dis à des nos services tonight. There's food in the back if you guys are hungry. So don't worry. There's, there's, it's okay if we uh, get up a little late today. So you're not going to go home hungry. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Robinson, lover of his children, his wife Rachel, and his mom Molly, who felt contented when he played baseball. And Marius, when he was with he, with his family, and heartbroken when his oldest son Jackie Jr. died, who needed to stay out of trouble, to be with with his wife Rachel, who he loved and to endure the harsh treatment thrown at him because of segregation, who feared a bad future after he got arrested at a young age. The death of his family members and what would become of his son, Junior, who was once arrested for possession and addicted to drugs, who gave African Americans a chance to play major league sport. A chance to play loan money with Freedom National Bank, the bank he helped it establish, and over and over a million dollars to his fundraising campaign, the National Association of the Advancement of Colored People. Who would like to see Jackie Jr. Jackie Jr grow up into the great man he was becoming for just a little bit longer. So the nation come to an end in America and, Af and other African Americans being inducted in the Baseball Hall um, of Fame who dreamed of just playing baseball without being insulted for being African American student of the Bo Brooklyn Dodgers Robinson. Amen. This is another black, uh, Jackie Robinson, who was the first black that played in baseball. Okay? So this is what to show you, guys. Every time I see this kid, I see a lawyer, I see a doctor, I see a nurse, I see a scientist, I see an engineer. You want me to stand over there? Yeah, take Jackson? a seat. Yes, yes. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I'm too tall for this. <laughs> oh, this is her body, Jackson, in the church. She's a... Uh, uh, school uh, teacher for the kids. She's our program. Whatever we're doing, something she put he put it in the YouTube. So later on, we will give you the site so you can even watch it in YouTube for the church. So he will really be a big, big handful for the kids, and he always tell them to keep reading, reading, reading. This is his mission for the kids for to succeed in, in life. So we thank God for Brother Jackson in our church with us. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is, uh, I'm going to tell them, tell you guys about what 
all their people think this is um his name is Thomas and Maxine Daniel, founder of African American Heritage Association of Mammoth County of Foster Environment, where African American can learn and feel good about their history and contribution to society. This is him and his wife who uh have this uh, um association this is in Mammoth County on South Jersey. So he was telling us he's a teacher, his wife is a teacher. And he was telling us what the other ways sometimes think about us as black people. So he was telling us, don't let this thing think, um, uh, put yourself down. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I want you to guys to know that whatever they think about you is not that. So let, let me read just a little uh, place that I highlight. He said, the black, they always think that black people are very lazy and shiftless. If they continue to give up the impression that we are good for nothing, we begin to believe it. Every time you people telling you are good to nothing, so that's what is going to uh, stay in your mind. Even some teachers, you're going to find them discouraged. Oh, you never graduated in high school. You never make it. You never go to college. You find some teacher like that. So don't let them put you down. Always show them you can do better than what they think in their mind. So that's the impression uh, of the best way to exercise control is to prevent African Americans from becoming educated. So sometimes a lot of times it's from you from the put doing the saying that is for you to get discouraged and becoming from uh, start from your education. You can end up in the street, using drugs, walking with your pace down in your leg, acting stupid. So that's what I want you to do. But always make sure you tell them what they think of you because your skin color cannot stop you from doing your dream. So there was, um, I'm not reading the whole thing because I don't want to take too much time. He's saying, uh, super social of ice cream, we say there's people, there's I mean, a lot of black American that became a, they are good inventor. They don't tell you about, that's the problem with our kids. They don't tell them in their history at the school because most of the school controlled by white people, right? Yes. We, don't, we don't have black people within control of the school. You have a few colleges that, that with black people, sometimes we cannot afford to go to those colleges. So the kids don't really know their history. They don't really know there are a lot of black people who invent, and I'm going to tell you a few of them, that was a good inventor. Uh, we have, uh, according to Robert Taylor Network, a non-profit organization that works to increase minority participation in science, engineering, and mathematics, African-American, Conjure surprise such as ice cream invented by August T. Jackson. Do we know he was a black man who invented ice cream? He was in 1832. The clothes dryer, the dryer that, that closed uh, dry your clothes, it was invented by an African American. Invented by G. T. Simpson in 1892. An improvement up to the telephone patent by, by Quenville Woods in 1884. So we have from 1870 to 1890, African-American inventor patent, the fire extinguisher, did you know that? Scott folding, cast wheel, fire escape ladder, that, that the firemen that used to, to uh, control the fire, husky machine, egg beater, you know the thing that we used to, to beat the egg, it was uh, invented by African-American, corn husky machine, um, briefcase, guitar, elevator, car wash, lawn mower, fountain pen, and ventilating shoes, amongst other things. During the same time frame, Edward Alexander Butcher became the first African-American graduate of Yale University and went to become the first African-American to earn a doctorate from American University, Mary Eliza, Mahoney became the first African American to graduate from the nursing school, and Michael Haley became the first African American to come in a U.S. military ship. Sarah E. Good also became the first African American woman to earn a patent when she invented the cabinet bed. So we have a lot of inventors that came from our culture. That if you don't know black history, you're not going to know about it. So church is not only preaching the word of God. But the kids need to know to, uh, about the social thing that is going on. So this is what they think. If they can do that, we probably have an inventor here. We don't even know. So if you tell, if those people can do it, me too can do it. 
so we can do that too and, and control and let the kids know that they can do better in that. So we have more things, so maybe another time I can read it to you to make a birthday. We have our Sarah. Do you have any more people who have to read within read? Oh, come on, Carlo. Come on. Carlo. Carlo. Angelo. Angelo. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So I got the law. At least I got the law. I got the right to get out of I got Angelo. After Angelo read his poem, we have Sarah who's going to do um, a praise dance for you guys. <laughs> Okay, so I have a poem by Amari Baraka for Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. For Malcolm's eyes when they broke, the face of some dumb white man. For Malcolm's hands raised to bless us, all black and strong in his image. Of ourselves, for Malcolm's words, fire darts, the victors tireless. Thrust words hung over the world. Change as it may, he said, and for this he was killed for saying and feeling and being change all collected hot in his heart for malcolm's heart raising us above our filthy cities for his stride and his beat and his address to the gray monsters of the world for Ma malcolm's pleas for your dignity black men for your life black men for your feelings of your minds with righteousness for all of him dead and gone and vanished from us and all of him which clings to our speech, black God of our time. For all of him and all of yourself, look up, black man, quit stuttering and shif shuffling. Look up, black man, quit whining and stomping for all of him. For great Malcolm, the prince of the earth, let nothing in, our, in us rest until we avenge ourselves for his death. Stupid animals that killed him, let us never breathe a pure breath if we fail. Those are the those are the men too who died for of uh, to help us become who you are today. So we have Rachel who's going to sing a song. It's about how you yourself you can help the world change. You can change the world by the way you act. Just want to say too, the poem that he did for a, a Baraka is his son is the mayor of Newark now. Oh, Michael X. No, uh, Amari Baraka. Amari Baraka's son oh. is the mayor of Newark yeah. now. Oh, okay, okay. That's the yeah. mayor. Yeah, he just uh, won the uh, yeah. election. As I turn up the collar on my favorite winter coat, this wind is blowing my mind. I see the kids in the street without enough to eat. Who am I to be lying, pretending not to see their need? A summer's disregard, a broken bottle top, and a one man soul. They follow each other on the wind, you know, cause they got nowhere to go. That's why I want you to know I'm starting with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could have been any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and then make Yeah. 
sing that song. The reason I'm letting her uh, dance that song, he was in the middle of his father. Her father was very sick. I was hiding it from them. But when he was going to start the treatment, I couldn't hide it no more. So I have to tell them. So we sit in the couch and then I start talking, explain to them what happened to daddy. But we know she's going, he's going to get some treatment to get away of everything. Oh my God. It was like a funeral in this house that day. The kids were so sad, especially the little one. And that the word that hurt me so bad when he, she said, Mama, Mommy, I can't believe it. My daddy has cancer. Why? I can't believe it. And then I said, You know what? We don't know why. But God knows why. Amen. And we believe we're going to overcome this. Amen. And then and then we went to the hospital that Friday. I slept over. They slept over with Cheshire. Mm -hmm. 